Hi, I'm Mitra Sorrells in the Focus Wire studio, and I am joined now by Jeff Klee, CEO of Amtrav. Jeff, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad you could join us. So, you know, I was looking back, I had uh, done an interview with you a couple of years ago, hard to believe it's been two years at this point. And at the time you said that you expect within five years, so that would be 2024 that you were thinking about, that a lot of TMCs will be out of the booking business altogether. And a very significant chunk of managed travel bookings will be made supplier direct. Yeah. Update me on that thinking. When I mean, I, I absolutely still believe it. And I think, I mean, if anything, you know, maybe it'll even be accelerated. I, I think that, you know, we're omni-channel is kind of the latest buzzword in corporate travel that everybody's talking about. Uh, and I, I think that there, the, the gap is growing between the, the modern booking tools and the ones that haven't been updated in quite some time. And, and I think, you know, traveler rebellion is, is growing about using tools that where you can't do everything, you can't buy everything, you can't find all the options. And I just think that, there are a lot of TMCs that aren't willing or able to invest what is needed in order to give a, a booking experience that, that travelers demand now. So what does it take to move that ahead? I mean, where do you see that, that innovation coming? Well, I, I think part of it is, is innovation and I think the technology is, is getting there. I think there, there's a lot of resistance and a lot of people are, are wedded to the status quo for, for various reasons. So I think, you know, a lot of things have to change, but but eventually what what's going to move the needle is demand from travelers and their companies. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, you know, is it becoming more that it's about traveler management and less about the travel management, you know, of the of the trip? I, no, I don't think it's becoming more about that, but it's 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 becoming more possible to have your cake and eat it, too. From the company's standpoint, they have things that they really need. They need to be able to track their travelers. They want reporting. They want accurate you know, data on expenses. And you know, in, in the old world, it was like, we're going to make sure that these happen. You know, everything else be damned. So we don't care if the booking experience is terrible. We'll, we'll accept that in order to get these benefits. But now it, it's becoming more and more possible to get those benefits um, and still give the company what they need. Uh, and I think that that's the big differentiator. You know, you made the comment just a moment ago about co companies kind of being wedded to their existing systems and all of that. That sounds to me, you know, that maybe the disruption has to come from a, a startup, uh, from a from a new entity. Right. You know, um, yes, I mean it, it, that's or pushed by it. Maybe. That that's usually what happens. Yeah. I mean, in, in any industry, and I think you know our industry is no exception. I mean, we have some, you know, very powerful players who uh, who like the way things have always been and are fighting hard to keep it that way. But I I think they will eventually lose out. So, you know, of course, on the topic of startups in corporate travel, the one that comes to mind is Trip Actions. They've gotten a lot of headlines. They've gotten a lot of money. They've raised about one point three billion dollars total um, at a valuation of seven point two five billion. What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, well, first of all, I'm jealous of their <laughs> everything about them. I mean, you know, they're. Uh, I think they they came in with the right product at the right time, and I give them a ton of credit in that they were, um, you know, they 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 came into the market in a big way. They, uh, they were very aggressive, and they they've done a good job both on the product innovation side, but also on the sales and marketing side. And when you when you couple those two things together, and you throw a lot of money at it. You know, this was an industry that was was ripe for that, and you know they they deserve the success they've had. Um, if you were creating a business travel solution today, talk me through maybe you know what would be your priorities or what would what would be key to that. I mean, I think it's 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 about you know kind of what we were talking about before, where where we 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 take care of the company needs and requirements, but we also take care of what the travelers want. And we create a, a system that the, the travelers love and that they will embrace. And I mean, that's what we try to do every day. And I think a lot of that is about choice and trying to, even though the, um, you know, the ultimate goal for us, we, we want to create a, a tool that travelers will love to use. But if, if we can't do that, or if a traveler is a, you know, a Delta Medallion member or you know, the Hilton Honors member, they want to book directly with the supplier, how can we make that work within the, the 
program too. And I, and I think that, you know, that, that's what Omnichannel is all about, if you can get it right. I mean, I don't think anyone's quite there yet, but I think that that's, uh, it's something we should all be thinking about. Um, I know in June, Amtrav announced a partnership with Embers, correct? Yeah, well, we've had a partnership for quite a while, but it started with Certified, but it's, um, we, this it's This is wrong. the receipt integration. Uh, uh, oh, the Embers, yeah. Yes, it, yes. Okay, yes. got it. Uh, so I'm just curious, you know, um, do you have future partnerships in the works and how, how do you make decisions there as to when it makes sense to partner or when it makes sense to try to innovate on your own? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, in the past, we, we, we've reinvented a lot of wheels and we always are, 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 our instinct is always to build this ourselves. Yeah. Um, but we also, I mean, we're proud of the fact that we have a very open tech stack and we could integrate really easily with, with almost anyone. Uh, and we tend to let customers drive that. Like a lot of our partnerships come about because a, a customer of ours, um, you know, is also working with another company that they'd like us to integrate. Um, I mean, in the case of Imburse, we have a, a, a long history with their uh, parent company. Okay. Um, so it was a natural fit for us. Uh, so we've, uh, and it's, it's a good product that they have. And, and I think it will, um, we could create mutual value for both of our customers. As you speaking again about Amtrav and, and what you have happening there, what are some of your priorities, let's say, for the coming year or the coming five years? I mean, what, where are you thinking? I mean, I, I think it's to continue to elevate the, the booking experience and to, um, uh, I mean, you know, we're, we're working on a few big initiatives. I mean, one is, is, is meetings and, and guest travel to better integrate that into, I mean, what we offer is an all-in-one solution. And, and our ideal is you shouldn't have to go somewhere else for, for anything related to travel. And so many times within the corporate travel world, you're using all these different systems for, you know, you're using one system for, for transit travel, one system for meetings, then you have another system to manage your duty of care, then you have an expense management system. And I mean, we wanna bring that all under one roof. So, so we're doing a lot there. Um, the second thing I think is, is with respect to uh, self-service capabilities. And um, I mean, it, it, it bothers me to no end uh, the, the limitations on being able to self-service. Like too, there, too high a percentage of transactions, if someone wants to make a certain type of change, it just can't be done online. And, you know, there's all sorts of reasons for that. And, there, you know, the suppliers have work to do on their end. But, I mean, we, we want to make it so that, uh, that, that in, if, if a traveler calls us or chats with us, it's because they want to, not because there's a capability that they can't do themselves. That, that would be nice, just from the perspective of someone that's a traveler, for sure. Um, let's also talk. We can't uh, let this interview end without talking about your other company, 1-800-CHEAP-AIR. I know we've talked in the past about the name and your thoughts on some of that, but, you yeah. know, it's still it's still going. I know that it was um, one of the first companies in travel to accept cryptocurrency, which certainly has really gotten a lot of buzz, um, you know, in this in the last year even, what do you see happening there in that space? Do you, do you see that that's going to accelerate? The, in terms the, of cryptocurrency? Yes. Yeah, it's so, I mean, obviously cryptocurrency is getting a ton of attention and, and it's accelerating in terms of people, you know, being interested in and buying cryptocurrency. What I think is still, um, the jury's still out on is, is cryptocurrency a, a, a currency or a store of value? And I, I think that, you know, when, when we first started taking Bitcoin in 2013, it was seen as a currency and the, the, the kind of the early adopters of, of Bitcoin were, were passionate about, you know, replacing the U.S. dollar with, uh, with, with and, and other currencies around the globe. Now, you know, now it's what, eight years later. I mean, it doesn't seem that likely that we're going to have Bitcoin replace the dollar anytime soon, but um, but you are seeing it in some third world countries where it is becoming more um, more utilized. So, so there, there are some applications there, but I also think it's because of its run up in price has almost um, hurt the original vision. And now it's everyone sees it as an investment, right. not something that they want to use to transact with. So, um, I mean, I, I'm not sure where that will shake out. And we're trying to and you know, smarter people than me can probably give you an, an answer on that. We, we just wanna, if people wanna use cryptocurrency to pay, we wanna be able to support it and we do. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting. I, I guess I would um, just end our discussion by asking, you know, so 1-800-CHEAP-AIR, if I know, uh, remember correctly, founded in 91, so that's 30 years <laughs> yeah. at this point. What advice might you have for young people coming up in the industry now, trying to think about starting a company? Uh, don't start an OTA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, other than that, I mean, I, I think, you know, and in a conference like this, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and it's about, uh, and, and maybe this is because I'm so old, but it's focus on the product, focus on the service and do what you're doing really well and don't focus so much on your your exit strategy, your end game from day one. I mean, I talked to so many um, you know founders who have, are just starting out and they're already talking about who they're gonna sell to or who's gonna acquire them. And, if, if, if you're thinking that on day one, you're probably not going to um, have a successful ending that, you know, build a really good product that actually solves a problem and then the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 30 years of uh, history. I know. You're, you're, you're know. making me feel ancient. <laughs> no, no. That's a wonderful <laughs> legacy. I mean, that's great. So wise words to share with the younger folks, right? <laughs> wonderful. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.